Hey, Marcus Conti, accidental journalist and whistleblower, plaintiff in Conti versus DSNY. There's your number right there. Pow. Today we're going to talk about something uh, called the tort of outrage. What is the tort of outrage? Conti, just making us, attorney, dragging us into the legal, legal stuff. Okay, tort of, the tort of outrage is something that is uh, very, very relevant in this case. And I'll tell you why. Well, I'll just read it to you. It's intentional infliction of emotional distress. Right? It uh, allows individuals to recover for severe emotional distress caused by another individual who intentionally or recklessly inflicts emotional distress by behaving in an extreme or outrageous way. Right? So it's the thing that makes you go, that's outrageous. Say it with me. That's outrageous. Right? That's what it, that's what it does. Right? Someone in the halls of government has empowered DSNY to enforce an illegal ticket quota and steal an estimated $600 million from taxpayers. For almost 30 years, no one has done anything about it. That's outrageous! DSNY has defrauded the general public, public, placed city workers in harm's way, and used people of color as human shields. That's outrageous! These are the uh, four elements of uh, the tort of outrage. Number one, defendant acted intentionally or recklessly. Two, Defendant's conduct was extreme and outrageous. Three, defendant's act is the cause of distress. My distress. Plaintiff suffering suffers severe emotional distress as a result of defendant's conduct. That's outrageous. It's not necessary that an act be intentionally offensive. A reckless disregard for the likelihood of causing emotional distress is sufficient. The conduct must be heinous and beyond the standard of civilized decency or utterly intolerable in a civilized society. Whether the conduct is illegal does not determine whether it meets the standard of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Intentional infliction of emotional distress is also known as the tort of outrage due to a classic formulation of the standard. The conduct must be such that it would cause a reasonable person to exclaim, Outrageous! <laughs> That's outrageous! Right. Outrageous! Okay, so some of the general factors that will uh, persuade the conduct, persuade that the conduct was extreme and outrageous. Number one, there was a pattern of the conduct, ju not just an isolated incident. In my case, how many? Ten write-ups, right? Nine write-ups, insufficient, insufficient, you know, uh, performance evaluations. Number two, the plaintiff was vulnerable and the defendant knew it. I'm a subordinate worker. How much more vulnerable does it get? You know, you're in this position. The defendant, number three, this defines it. The, the defendant was in a position of power. They're the employer. All of the accusations I've made were all supervisors. They're all people with direct discretion over my job, right? I've, agents, I've never made a single accusation of an agent. Right? Number four. Racial epithets were used. Damn straight. Damn right. How could how could how could it you know a one hundred percent black and Hispanic supervisory staff you know and and the EEO lady said says that that's that's diverse. That's diverse. No, it's diversity. That is outrageous. The emotional distress suffered by the plaintiff must be severe. The standard is qualified by the intensity, duration, and any physical manifest manifestations of distress. A lack of productivity or a mental disorder document documented by a mental health professional is typically required, although acquaintances' testimony about a change in behavior could be persuasive. 
extreme sadness, anxiety, or anger in conjunction with a personal injury may also qualify. Having your direct supervisor in a, in, a, in a training session give you a satisfactory getting a 95 on the exam, doing everything, doing everything the same, better, or equal to everybody else around you, and getting a satisfactory on your performance evaluation, and then six months later discover that that supervisor went back and changed her, her marking, her satisfactory performance evaluation to unsatisfactory. That's outrageous. Having a direct supervisor uh, go, go down... Ha, how about going down to uh, the EEO department and complaining of racism and discrimination and the, the existence of an illegal quota and having your, your immediate supervisor go down and state respectfully that he approached me and tried to explain to me, just do your job. Just do your job. He said, he stated that DSNY does not have a ticket quota a quota of tickets to be written on a daily basis. Agents are never instructed to write a certain number of summonses. After all we know, after all we've seen in this, in this process, that is outrageous. How about a conflict of interest? How about going down to the EEO department at your, at your local uh, uh, employer and, and talking about racism and discrimination and then having an hour-long conversation with that person and telling her all about the, the pros and cons of the organization and then her telling you that everything is going to be, she's going to look into it, everything will be okay and then having her write, write her author the official position statement against you in court. That is outrageous. So the tort of outrage applies, right? We know that it's it. This is this is a a an ongoing pattern, right? It's not an isolated incident, right? That the SNY has a, a thirty year running quota, and someone comes along and accidentally, you know, or incidentally, or whatever the reason was, exposes it in a you know in a covered proceeding, right? He's trying to get he's trying to stop the, the, the discrimination that he's experiencing in the workplace and he reaches out to his EEO department and then the EEO department turns on him and prepares the position statement against him right Th these are all these all fall into the category of outrageous where 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 staff why why is it that why is it that staff won't come forward as witnesses right? Now everybody knows the quota exists, right? You know, what what you know, why won't they come forward? Because they're terrified, right? Because of the fear of retaliation, right? Fear of ending up like Conti, right? See if you if you open your mouth and you go down to EEO, look what happens. They 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 pile on the fake write ups and, and then they and then they, they they smear you, right? Nobody wants that, right? So that's outrageous. That is outrageous. So just to um, recap the the uh, state of affairs, the the dates. So January second, third, <laughs> January second or third, two thousand seventeen, DSNY corporate counsel will have to uh, provide provide us with an answer to the the appeal and the brief that's down below. They could try again to postpone it, but uh, they, they essentially that is the date and they will have to respond to that in writing and they will have to justify their position to the, the appeals uh, court. Right? And from there, then I'll have X amount of time to respond to that. So all of these papers will be da uh, down below. So we're now approaching you know, D-Day, uh, approaching the truth. The truth in the matter will come out when DSNY replies to the appeal. Right? Peace out. Outrageous. Mama, 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 body. Outrageous.